Richard Nixon, who later became president, Joseph McCarthy and many others, turned their attention to the affair of Alger Hiss, H-I-S-S. -S. Alger Hiss was an individual who had worked in the State Department and had been a government employee and a very important position, series of positions. And Alger Hiss came under suspicion for being an agent of the Soviet Union. It does seem he did lie under oath. And it seems entirely possible he was an agent of the Soviet Union. But now what does Joe McCarthy do with this? He gives this speech just very shortly after Alger Hiss has been convicted. Today, he says, we are engaged in a final all-out battle between communistic atheism and Christianity. Well, you couldn't get any more definite than that. And what kind of battle is it? It's a final battle. Final battle, to me, this conjures up certain images of sort of the, the apocalypse. Well, um, it could have been a final battle. I was alive during the Cuban Missile Crisis. The Soviet army uh, officer in Cuba who was in charge of the nuclear missiles that were in Cuba, that were aimed at the United States, actually had the personal authority to launch those missiles. He didn't need to call Moscow. We now know that. And what would have happened if he'd sent those missiles towards, say, Miami or Washington, DC? I think there would have been a pretty good chance there would have been some kind of thermonuclear war, the consequences of which are incalculable. So although this uh, language sounds apocalyptic, in another 12 years, it would certainly not be considered apocalyptic. The stakes were becoming that high. And it was seen as a battle. Nikita Khrushchev, the leader of the Soviet Union in the early 1960s, said, quote, we will bury you. But then McCarthy goes on. The reason why we find ourselves in a position of impotency is not because our only powerful potential enemy has sent men to invade our shores. No, it's not that cause and effect. It's another cause and effect. But rather because of the traitorous actions of those who have been treated so well by this nation. Now, there is the beginning of the accusation. It's not that the Soviets have launched an attack. It's not that they're going after us. It's that there are individuals in the United States who have committed traitorous actions, and moreover, they've been treated very well already by the country. They're favored. Then he says, this is glaringly true in the State Department. They're the bright young men who are born with silver spoons in their mouths. Now, what does it mean to be born with a silver spoon in your mouth? Privilege. Privilege. McCarthy is using the image as something to say, look, these people can afford a silver spoon for their babies which was a lot harder for a lot of people to afford then than it is now. But yes, then, famous, famous moment. I have here in my hand a list of 205, a list of names that were made known to the Secretary of State as being members of the Communist Party and who nevertheless are still working and shaping policy in the State Department. 205 names. I have here in my hand did he ever divulge those names? No, he never divulged those names. Whether he had 205 names on that list, I don't know. That's some tactic, though. How would you like it? How would you like it if somebody on the faculty got up and said, I have here in my hand a list of 205 students who have cheated on their exams? Wow. Ouch. Not nice. Talk about beginning to sow distrust, beginning to sow fear, beginning to sow suspicion. Then he says, one thing to remember, and this is in the bottom of the page, in discussing the communists in our government. Now, he's already assuming they're there. That's, 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 that's fairly interesting rhetorical move, the communists in our government. Now, let's stop for a second. Were there some communists in the government? Yes, there were. There were. And prosecutions, including successful prosecutions for Soviet or Russian agents, went on all through the 1950s, 60s, and 70s. And there are still people serving time for having done that. So is there some truth on the side of McCarthy? Yes, there is. 
Andy Del Banco, who teaches at, at Columbia, says the most insidious thing about the demagogue, the most insidious thing about the demagogue is that along the way, he may express, as Richard Hofstadter has said in his great essay on the paranoid style in American politics, the demagogue may express certain defensible judgments. That is to say, certain things will be said that turn out to be true. Then McCarthy goes on to call upon the moral quality of the American people because he says this is a story of high treason. Was it a story of high treason? Yes, in a few instances, without doubt. Was it a story of 205 people infesting the government with high treason? No, it was not. Were certain judgments true? Yes. Did his audience know at that time what was true or not? No, they didn't. They didn't know whether those 205 names were right or wrong. Did they know that someone had just been convicted of lying to the government? Yes. McCarthy then, for a period of years, succeeded in pushing his agenda very strongly.